for Dr. Zhang's introduction, and on behalf of Metagen Vaccine Biologics Corporation, I'm here to introduce the result of our phase two clinical trial for our product, EPZ phase one vaccine. So, uh, this this was a snapshot from the CDC website and just in, uh, illustrating the zero types of enterovirus infection with severe complications in Taiwan during 1998 to 2014. And as you can see, the purple one, which occupies the largest proportion of the zero type, is EBA71. So after the 1998 outbreak, EB71 contribute to the majority of the severe complications of enterovirus infection. So this is the evolution of our EB71 vaccine, and uh, actually this is the story you heard from uh, Dr. Liu Jiaqi. The research and development was initiated by CDC in 2003, and NHRI conducted the phase one adult clinical trial in 2012, and uh, we uh, Medigen Vaccine Corporation uh, received the baton and conducted the phase two clinical trial in children um, uh, in 2014. And we will conduct a uh, phase three clinical trial at the end of this year. So after the phase one clinical study, we have a prototype of this vaccine, which is it's a cell-derived inactivated whole virus vaccine and it is liquid form and with cold chain stored. But there are still some points remain to be determined, such as what's the target population of this vaccine and what's the dosage schedule and what's the formulation, what's the optimal dosage of this vaccine. So we need to design a phase two clinical trial to find those answers. So this I borrowed from the CDC website again, and thanks for your hard work, CDC. And this is the age distribution of hand and mouth disease with severe complication during 1998 to 2014 in Taiwan. And the red bar represents the age of one to four years, and the blue bar represents the age of under one year. So that means the most severe complications for age under five years. So we end the target population to children younger than five years old. But how early should we start administration of this vaccine? So here's another reference. This table illustrates the relative attack and the case severity and also the fatality rate of hand foot mouth disease during 2010 in China. As you can see, Although the children, the infants within six months of birth, they have low, uh, relative old, low attack rate, but they have five-fold greater case severity and a 25-fold greater rate of fertility compared with the six to 10 years old group. Also, the age within six months to 12 months, they have increased the attack, relative attack rate profoundly and it's the highest among children one to three years. And, oh, but the case severity and the case fertility rate decline with the age and infection. So this table is suggesting that the most vulnerable group is the age within six months. So uh, in addition, we have the target pop uh, population at the age of two months to five years, but uh, from the pre previous experience of the inactivated vaccine, we know that primary one shot or two shots may not maintain a good immune response for a long period. For example, taking polio, the family member of EBA71, it is recommended with three doses in WHO guidance at the beginning of age two months. So we added a booster dose for this younger population at one year later. And for the optimal dosage, we designed low dose, mid dose, and high dose in this clinical trial in order to find the optimal dosage for this population. In addition, we would also we are also wondering that our vaccine, which belongs to B4 strain. 
can cover or cross-react with other genotypes circulating in other countries. So this, this figure is the current epidemiology of circulating genotypes all, all over the world in, during these two decades. So we will pick up the most recent trends like B5 and C4A and, and uh, C2, C5 strand in our cross reaction, let's say. So we divided our uh, population into age by part. So we, we will do the clinical trial sequentially from the eldest children to the youngest. In total, we enrolled 365 subjects. So this is the flow chart of our phase two design. First, we tested the high dose vaccine to confirm safety in the eldest children. And then we carefully administered the dose from low dose to high dose carefully. And at the end of this part, the data safety monitoring board gathered together and chose mid dose and high dose for the next age cohort. And for the age cohort of six months to less than two years and the, the age of two months to less than six months, we added a booster dose after one year later. So let's look up the safety data first. For the solicited adverse event, the, this vaccine was just as common as other vaccines. So the most common ones were pain and tenderness and redness, around 10% to 40% of each group, including placebo. And as for the general symptoms, the most frequent solicited adverse events were appetite loss and fatigue, but all of the general symptoms were mild to moderate in intensity and mostly are self-limited. There are all of the serious adverse events are unrelated to the vaccination. So uh, we will discuss the immunogenicity by age part and for the age two to five years, we had two doses at day zero and day 28 without booster dose, and we tested the immunogenicity at day baseline and post first shot, post second shot, one year and two years after the primary doses. And we demonstrated the immunogenicity with reverse cumulative distribution curve using log transformed titers by percent of the subjects. So the transverse axis is the neutralization titer in log two, and the vertical axis is the percentage of subjects with that value of titer. So as you can see, the th compared with the placebo group, which is the very left line of each figure, they all elicited very good immune response even after two years. But however, the low dose is significantly lower than mid dose and high dose after two shots. So that's why DSMB chose mid dose and high dose for the next age cohort. And also the low dose group, they dropped after two years compared with one year before. And for the age six months to two years, we have three doses at day zero, day 28, and one year later. And we tested the immunogenicity at baseline and after two shots, and one year pre-booster, post-booster, and one year post-booster doses. So interestingly, that is worth mentioning is that all of these subjects in this age group, they are zero negative at baseline which means the maternal antibodies all disappeared before the age of six months. And both the mid-dose and high-dose elicited good immune response as well, but the mid-dose is significantly dropped at one year pre-booster dose. However, after the booster dose, the mid-dose performs as good as high-dose. And for age two months to six months, we have three doses at day zero, day 56, and day one year later. And at the baseline, the zero positivity rate is around 
which uh, is indicated, which suggesting the zero prevalence of maternal antibiotics. But all of the titers were not that high. I think more, most of them are not are no more than two to the power of seven. I think this just echoes the Professor Liu's hypothesis this morning that is inadequate neutralization titers might reversely in, induce severe complication instead. So, and we have, and as you can see, the high dose and mid dose all performed a good immunology response even after one year booster dose. And for the, the one year booster dose, the mid dose were even higher than the high dose. But the curve is not significant difference. Uh, during the statistic analysis. We also performed the cross-reaction with other genome types. So as you can see, the, all the dosages were cross-react with C4A, C5, C5, C4B together. But if we use the zero protection, which is defined as the neutralization titer more than 1 to 32, we can see the mid-dose and high-dose performs the best cross-reaction among, among all genome types. So that's why we chose mid-dose as our final dose for our next phase three study. So here comes our phase three design. We will, have, uh, we will totally enroll 3,200 in Vietnam and Taiwan, enrolling two months to six-year-old children. And we will have primary two doses at two months apart and a booster dose for younger population one year after. And we hope to see the efficacy. This study is about to start at the end of this year, this year and we hope to see the efficacy one or two years later. So this is the end of my speech and with our photo of our factory which is located in Jubei City in Taiwan and you are all welcome to visit and we look forward to seeing you soon in the future. Thank you.